Ms. Amrita Patil. Hey. And it has been uh, it has been selected by critic Ms. Panjana Paul. Hey. <laughs> so with a little change in the format, we would have the theatrical act first, and the act is being performed under the guidance and direction of Professor Rana Nair. We invite Nishtha, Harleen, Rohit and Parul to kindly come on the stage to enact the passages from the book Adi Par. Good afternoon, everyone. Among Brahma's many children was Marichi, whose son was Kashyap. Kashyap, whose name means tortoise, was married to 13 of Prajapati Daksha's daughters and fathered the Devas, Asurs, demons, celestials, and forest spirits, trees, birds, beasts, serpents, most life as you know it. Of his innumerable wives, it was Vinata and Kadru whom Kashyap loved most. One day, he decided to give them a boon, each as a love gift. Ask me for anything you want. Now Vinata and Kadru were sisters and they loved one another as sisters often do. But they were also extremely competitive and envied one another a tad more than they loved one another. Their rivalries would spiral down through eternity in this tale of serpents and birds. Kadru was quick to respond to Kashyap's offer. surrounded by her brood. Vinata's weight was to be a long one. Shadows lengthened and shortened. Colors and seasons and the shapes of mountains changed. Five hundred years went by and Vinata's eggs remained unhatched still. Finally, unable to bear it any longer, she broke open the egg closest to her. Inside lay Arun, strong of chest and unformed of legs. What have you done? For this impatience, I curse you to be your sister's slave. You will be freed by my brother of golden feathers. If you have the good sense, go to wait for him. Then Arun spread his wings and flew straight towards the sun. Thousand years went by before Vinata's other egg broke open. Garur, foremost of the bird tribe, emerged golden. Such was his effulgence, no god or mortal could gaze at him directly. He would need to take on a less blazing form so that others could look at him. Like his brother before him, Garur flew straight towards the sun. The long incubation had made him ravenous. Garur circled the skies in search of food. Nothing could sate his hunger though. Finally, he heard the voice of his father Kashyap. There are countless born into the serpent race. Able of body, but malignant of soul. Let them be your natural food. To this day, Garur's shadow fills the hearts of low-lying ones with dread. The rift between Kadru's reptilian sons and Vinata's avian sons would prove to be impossible to breach, and it would all begin over the hair on a horse's tail. Kadru, look! On this side of the world and that, legends speak of the winged white horse that rises from the ocean. Some say he has a horn on his forehead. Some say he does not. Everyone agrees he's breathtakingly beautiful. One of his names is Uchai Shrava. The sisters set their eyes upon him, giddy with prescience. Flawless, not a speck of color on his white coat. Almost flawless. Back for a thousand years. So be it. I have 
gathered her sons around her. It's time for you to use your magical powers to help your mother. Shrink your bodies into black helmets and attach yourselves to Uchrava's tail when Vinaba isn't looking. She hadn't anticipated She hadn't anticipated her son's response. Even the most vicious among them, the kind who delighted in picking a fight at the slightest provocation, were loath to trick their gentle aunt. A hushed silence greeted Kadru. She was livid. Ungrateful wretches, you need to think so hard when your mother's dignity is at stake. I cursed you today. A mother's curse that won't go unfulfilled. A mortal king will be born. His only purpose will be to destroy every last one of you. You will meet a ghastly end by fire. The serpents were stricken by fear. Some decided to appease their mother by following her command. And Vinata became Kadru's slave. Carry me to the edge of the ocean and back. Your will is done. What of the curse now, mother? What of it, fools? The words have left my mouth. I can't revoke them. Let the worthiest among you repent and seek wisdom. Therein lies hope for the rest. The serpent population gathered around their three princes, Anant, Vasuki and Takshak. They were divided into two factions. The majority wanted to use brawn to wreak havoc on their future enemy. The other wanted to tread gently and alter the course of fate. It ought surprise none that the latter were outnumbered. In the future, a terrible fire awaits us. Tending to by dozens of priests in King Jammedaya's service, I can see our children burning. Let us nip the lineage in the bud, so there will never be a Jammedaya. Let us kill the forefather of all the priests. Let us douse all the fires in the world. Only Anant, oldest among snakes, remained silent. The ears of his brothers rang with their mother's curse. But Anant's thoughts were on the very last words she spoke about repenting and seeking wisdom. Recognizing the futility of all that lay ahead, he walked away from his brothers. Much is made of unflagging optimism, that blind, bouncy state which understands neither cause nor effect. While there is merit in being grateful for every day you are alive, periodic hopelessness is a great you look so beautiful with your hair left open, mother. Why do you tie it up so severely? If I left my hair open, you wouldn't hear a word I said. When Kadru's oldest son looked at his brothers, he didn't see magical serpents whose future due to it. He saw desperation, fear, just a thrashing snake pit. Walking away, a great distance away from Naglok, the abode of serpents, Anant reached the hem of the lotus ocean. There he met a being, smiling, androgynous. I want none of that world. Keep me by your side. The Thastu. Thus did Anant become the bed Vishnu reclined on, his tail the axis that centered the world. In the meantime, finding out about his mother's slavery, Garur made his way to Naglok. Every ever vigilant for ways to subvert their mother's curse, the serpents sensed an opportunity. We want to live, and you want your mother. We should help each other out. Go to Devlok, home of the Devas. Bring us the nectar of immortality they got there. Bring us Amrit, and we will set your mother free. And that is what Garur set out to do. Piercing every line of defense, 
he entered devlok and carried away the amrit no one could stop him not the gods not their leader indra word spread like fire about the strange bird whose wings filled the sky indra appealed to vishnu to intercept him light sparkled on the lotus studded ocean garud found himself irresistibly drawn you do know what amrit must never reach unworthy hands i was sparing across my mother's ransom ransom what would you rather i do look what we have here an untouched jar of amrit you had it what all these flashing in your palms nothing happens without several perfectly good reasons the birth of the solar raptors was no random blip either long before arun and garud were born their father kashyap held a sacrifice to ensure worthy children beings from all worlds participated in the rituals among them were the valkhilyas a group of rishis each no larger than your thumb when indra saw the valkhilyas walk by bent under the weight of a single leaf he burst out laughing startled the rishis fell into a puddle of water and this made him laugh harder all indras are prone to the folly of callousness the valkhilyas were short of stature but not of magical prowess they cursed indra and blessed kashyap in one shot a golden one born into kashyap's line will be the indra of the birth right he will control the sky and surpass you in every way it's all very well for garud he just stepped out of his shell and knew what to do raised right into vishnu's abode and never left but what becomes of stragglers who take longer to figure out what is what observe the nature of the straggler carefully is he a slow learner or is he just reluctant to move garun may have traced him but that is only half the story stay on in vakunt now that is the hard part back in the early days garud's heart grew heavy tell me what wears you down other teachers treat their disciples with so much love to you i am insignificant you never praise me you never give me gifts you don't even give me the credit i have rightfully earned it is my ways you write it is my ferocity that keeps the serpents in check yet you say you have overcome them you must be right I will give this some thought. Meanwhile, do me a favor. Will you? My little finger is very weary. Allow me to rest it on your back for a few moments. The weight of the finger crushed Garud to the ground. I am a fool. Forgive me. Garud emerged swifter and wiser than before. and he never forgot the lesson the gentle hand of grace that rests on your head to give you vision and might can destroy you with as much ease efface you of everything you know it took him longer to realize that the master sword maker heats hammers and labors over his most priceless work more relentlessly than over lesser blades in the foundry thank you so much
Thank you all for your performance. It's a pleasure to introduce Ms. Dipanjana Paul, a journalist and the author of The Painter, which is our biography of the Indian artist Raja Ravi Verma. A student of English and post-colonial literature, she writes about art, literature, cinema, and other facets of contemporary culture. While being an avid reader of non-fiction, she has a particular fondness for mythology and modern fiction. Ms. Dipanjana's writing has appeared in a variety of publications. Previously, she 